Sir, you're gonna need to calm down. Calm down. You gotta lower your voice. I need the account number for that. I need though. a banker. No, and the pin. How can I help you? So, you need money to build this? No. I have the money. What I need is discretion. OK. Yeah. We can be discreet. You can be discreet. Only you. No one else can ever know who I am. So, who are you? The history that we were all taught growing up is wrong. My name is Scott Walter, and I'm a forensic geologist. There's a hidden history in this country that nobody knows about. There are pyramids here, chambers, tombs, inscriptions. They're all over this country. We're going to investigate these artifacts and sites, and we're going to get to the truth. Sometimes history isn't what we've been told. America has always been a refuge for people seeking the freedom to speak their minds and practice their beliefs in ways they couldn't elsewhere in the world. As a result, churches, the press, and even secret societies like the Freemasons have all prospered here in the United States. But now, the true mission of one of America's alleged secret societies is being exposed. And it seems to go against the very idea of freedom. I'm on my way to the Denver International Airport, said to house a secret base of an organization that calls itself the New World Order. People have compared members of this illicit group to Nazis, claiming they're hell-bent on world domination and population control. I've been asked to investigate whether it's possible America's busiest airport really is sitting atop the command center for this cryptic organization. I'm here to meet someone who adamantly believes the New World Order has a hand in the Denver airport. But first, before I meet him, I'm going to check out what clues could be hidden around the airport myself. Excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you. My name is Scott. Hi, I'm Elena. You just get off a plane? Yeah, I just came in from Alaska. OK. I just have a, a question for you. I know this is kind of strange, but did you notice the murals as you went by? I did not. OK. What do you think when you see this? I wouldn't put it up in my house. It's a little disturbing. I, I don't care for it. It's pretty dark. Some people say these things are cryptic messages of a, uh, a dire future. I don't know what I think, but I'm going to try to uncover the truth. Hey, 
Hey, Greg, this is Scott Walter. Yeah, my plane just got in, and uh, I had a couple minutes to look around at your murals and some of the other things you mentioned, and I tell you what, I can't wait to talk to you. According to some, bizarre signs and symbols at the Denver airport are evidence that the New World Order manipulates everything going on in the world. Supposedly, the New World Order is a sinister organization that counts world leaders and the richest of society among its members. This shadowy syndicate is said to be planning global domination. Its very existence may have been inspired by an older secret society called the Illuminati, which was founded in Germany in 1776. People say both the New World Order and the Illuminati had the same mission, to take over the United States. By the 20th century, Adolf Hitler used the phrase New World Order to describe Nazism. President Woodrow Wilson, Winston Churchill, and even George H.W. Bush used it to refer to a global power shift that would usher in a new age of peace. Today, many say the mission of the New World Order is population control and world domination. frightening prospects that I want to learn more about. So, Greg, before we talk about some of your theories about the Denver airport, tell me about the New World Order. What is it? Well, what most people think the New World Order is, is that there's going to be a global takeover. They're going to dissolve all countries, and we'll be under a fascist state. So how would they implement this plan? You're talking about taking over the whole world or control of the whole world. How would they do that? Well, there's either going to be economic collapse, global economic collapse, terrorist attack much bigger than the World Trade Center, some kind of emergency, and the military is going to move in under the guise of a humanitarian effort. But you realize some people are going to look upon these claims as a little crazy. That's that fine. what you're talking about sounds almost like Nazi fascism. Well, let me show you something. This is the runway for the Denver International Airport. Now, I want you to tell me your gut reaction to this picture I'm going to show you. Don't think about it. Just look at it and tell me what you see. What I see is four runways that are arranged in the four directions, and it looks like a swastika. Right. You know, Greg, on the internet, they talk about that symbol and that it's a subliminal message from the New World Order. And, you know, this isn't the only one. There are many symbols that certain groups have put out into society, hidden in plain sight, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking about groups like the Freemasons. Absolutely. They're a big part of the powers that be. When I say powers that be, New World Order, globalism, the Illuminati, all the same thing. But it's only at the very highest tier of the Freemasons. You know, I remember when I was at the airport, I saw a Masonic capstone. You know anything about that? Yeah. I've got this picture right here of it. Down here, it's called the New World Airport Commission, as in the New World Order Airport Commission. This is a secret society doing the capstone at the Denver International Airport. OK. Now, who in the hell wants a secret society doing the capstone at an airport. They've got a secret. OK, do you think that they're up to something nefarious here by putting this capstone? Is this, in your mind, a message that's being sent to the people at that airport well, that a secret society is doing something under the radar? They're keeping secrets because they're going to take over. You're going to be living in a fascist state if we don't wake up. I'd say that uh, there's certainly a possibility of that, but again, I need to see the evidence for that, but I'm open to it. Right. Now, let me ask you another question. When I was going through the airport, I remember as I got on the tram, I saw this gold cart that had the letters A-U-A-G. Right. What does that say to you? People think that it refers to a certain type of uh, virus and that the New World Order is going to 
Unleash a virus. The AUAG is said to refer to Australia antigen, a deadly strain of hepatitis. But for me as a geologist, it makes a lot more sense that it's referring to the periodic symbols for gold and silver, products of the Colorado mining industry. Do you think that in this new world order, the powers that be, maybe one of the things that's part of their plan is to release a worldwide virus or pandemic on the world? Why would they do that? Is it to cripple the population so that they can take over easier? Right. Is it to deliberately reduce the population? Depopulation so they can easier control the people. There's a lot of talk on the internet that uh, there's gonna be a terrorist attack on the White House and they're gonna move the capital to Denver. Hmm. And That's... everybody's sitting around here, you know, watching Wheel of Fortune, whatever, you know, going out and doing their big screen TV, completely asleep to what's going on, just like in pre-Nazi Germany. What other evidence do you have that might tie this new world order to the Denver airport? And there's also the underground tunnels underneath the Denver International Airport. It's 53 square miles. That's huge, it's huge. A big area, yeah. And that could have been used for an underground base. An underground base as large as you're talking about. One of the first things I would want to do is to find out if the local geology here in Denver even lends itself to a base like that. That's why I called you out here, Scott. I want for us to dig and for us to prove that the New World Order has an underground base and tunnels underneath the Denver International Airport. That would be a huge find. It's not about people proposing ideas, proposing theories. It's about the evidence. If we're going to get to the truth of this, we've got to have facts. I'm looking for evidence of a dangerous secret society known as the New World Order. And not just whether it exists, but whether a secret base is hidden underneath the Denver airport. To shed some light, we need to dig. It's said that this organization is made up of a small group of the world's most powerful people who are planning to stage government takeovers around the world. Uncovering their hideout would go a long way to finding out exactly who's involved and what the New World Order has in store for all of us. Tell me again, what is it that makes you think that the New World Order could have built this extensive tunnel system under the Denver airport? There's a whistleblower, and he supposedly blew the whistle on the Denver airport. He was a geologist. He had a, a high security clearance with the government. He says he went in underneath the Denver airport and it had like, I believe, six to seven levels, he said. Really? That leads me to believe there is indeed an underground base underneath the Denver airport. My years of experience have told me the whistleblowers are usually telling the truth because they got a lot to lose. Where is this guy now? Maybe we should talk to him. He died shortly after. They said it was a suicide, but his ex-wife is uh, saying that he was murdered. That sounds really uh, suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I guess that leads us back to our own investigation here. What I'd like to do is try to get a feel for the local geology here okay. to see if this mass of tunnels that you talk about is... Uh, Possibility. It's really a possibility. I mean, if the geology lends itself to that, they could go for a long ways. If it doesn't, then maybe it's not as likely. Bar Lake Park is pretty close to Denver Airport, and so the geology in both places should be similar. The idea of the New World Order hiding a vast network of tunnels here beneath America's busiest airport is a huge yet frightening undertaking. A soil survey from just a few feet deep ought to tell me whether it's even possible to build an underground base like Greg is suggesting. You know what? That's all sand. Looks like it's getting a little bit lighter. Yeah, it's getting lighter in color. What do you think? Tell you what I'd like to do, clear out all this stuff here. I'm gonna look at it with my hand lens here. Okay. Let me take a look here. Well, you know what, Greg? Mm-hmm. This is mostly sandstone. 
relatively clean sand. It looks like it's mostly quartz. And we're within a few miles of the airport, so the geology here is probably similar over there. And if that's the case, this type of uh, rock would be some of the easiest material to tunnel through. Uh -huh. So the geology certainly works in your favor as far as a massive tunnel system. Based on what I see here, the question isn't whether the New World Order could have built this tunnel system that you claim. The question now is, did they? So <laughs> have you tried contacting the officials at uh, the airport, I mean, ask them questions? Yeah, I've called many times and uh, got nothing but rude comments, uh, wouldn't answer my questions, and it's just a dead end. Just blew you off, huh? Yep. I wonder if they'd answer questions if I asked them. Can you give me the number? And I will call them. Sure. All right. You know, there's a, another place that you might be interested in. It's uh, in Georgia and they're called the Georgia Guidestones. I've heard of the Georgia Guidestones. They are a set of mysterious granite slabs placed in the Georgia countryside in 1980. The monument is inscribed with a modern 10 commandments written in eight different languages. What frightens a lot of people is the suggestion that the human race be cut down from 7 billion to 500 million people. No one has worked out who is behind the Guidestones or why they are here but this sounds eerily like New World Order depopulation. Hi, this is Stacy with Denver International Airport. Please leave me a message and I'll get back to you shortly. Hi, my name is Scott Walter. I'm a forensic geologist and I'm investigating claims that there's a secret tunnel system under the Denver airport that's connected to the New World Order. Well, I'd just like some answers. My investigation into an alleged secret society called the New World Order has taken me from the Denver airport all the way to Georgia. I want to know if there is truth to the idea that the New World Order intends to reduce the world's population and stage a frightening global takeover. Some say the organization's home base is hidden underneath the Denver airport. Meanwhile, these massive stones in Georgia, called the Guide Stones, which are inscribed with 10 modern commandments in eight different languages, could also be a clue to who is behind this seemingly sinister group. Scott? Gary, how you doing? Good. Welcome to Elbert County. Thanks for meeting me here. Yes, sir. Wow. You impressed? Well, so far. <laughs> Tell you what, I just uh, came from the Denver airport and I'm investigating the New World Order. Many people say that these stones might be part of this New World Order. What can you tell me about these stones? These stones were erected in about 1980 and they were commissioned by a man named R.C. Christian. They're all cut from local granite. Elbert County is the granite capital of the world. These are big slabs, and if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a quick peek here. I'm a geologist, so the rocks are of particular interest, and it's relatively flat, but it's not polished or dressed clean. This is a fairly fine-grained granite. It's very uniform, and these are massive slabs. Typically, you won't see slabs this big coming out of a quarry, That's right? That's correct, that's right. So whoever did this definitely spent some money, a lot of money, so the message that they're sending is very important. You know, this whole thing about this new world order, we're talking about a small group of people that would set up a worldwide government that would basically run the world in all of us. And many people are concerned about that, and this monument here certainly gives people a reason to think about that. Now, we've got unite humanity with a living new language, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. That seems relatively innocuous. Protect people and nations with 
fair laws, and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Now that sounds very New World Order-ish. And look at the top. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. If that doesn't sound like a New World Order mandate, I don't know what does. I mean, that's dramatic. And if that is the mission, how would they do that? Are we talking about uh, a nuclear war? Are we talking about a pandemic that's going to kill most of the people on the planet? Well, I think that you have to keep in mind the, uh, the area in which these things were, uh, were built. Uh, this, was, this was done in 1980. That was kind of in the heyday of the, uh, of the Cold War. And I think that the people that put this thing together might have thought that there would be a catastrophic event, that there may be only 500 million left. Well, you and I were both around in 1980. I remember that very well. It was a scary time for the world. Absolutely. And so maybe the people behind this, if it's the New World Order or some other entity, was worried that maybe there would be a nuclear catastrophe and this was the message to the survivors. I mean, that does make some sense. Maybe so. That's, maybe that's what they were thinking about. It's also a calendar, and I don't know if you've noticed, but they've cut this hole through here, and you can actually see the sunset and on the summer solstice, it's lined up so that you can see that through this stone. Well, what we're talking about here is archaeoastronomy. Ancient cultures did this all the time. They would track the movement of the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, by building structures that would incorporate and capture these different alignments for religious and practical reasons. To go to that level of detail tells you something about how these people thought, or this R.C. Christian, uh, what was going through his head and why he erected this. So can you tell me a little more about this guy? What do we know about him? Well, we don't know too much about him. R.C. Christian is a pseudonym, and uh, he came here with this plan in mind, the details of what he wanted to build and what it needed to look like and the alignment and so forth. So there's not too much known about him. Well, whoever it was, this R.C. Christian, he spent a lot of money, and one of the things that I've learned, and I think a lot of people know, is if you want to try to get to the source of something, you follow the money trail. Right. Well, um, the man who uh, was responsible for the financial transactions for the Guidestones is a man by the name of uh, Wyatt Martin, and he was the bank manager. Is uh, he still living? Oh, yes, he is. The problem is, is that he has taken a vow not to reveal who R.C. Christian is, uh, and he's he said that he's going to take that to his grave. Well, maybe it's time somebody tried to change his mind. Well, good luck. The identity of R.C. Christian, the mysterious person behind the Georgia Guidestones, could be the key to understanding not just who built them, but what the messages on them really mean. Today, only one man knows who the real R.C. Christian was. But maybe by the end of the day, I will too, if I can convince him to share his secret. Wyatt Martin? You got him. Scott Walter, nice to meet you. Scott, glad yeah. here. I was wondering if I, I could ask you a few questions about the Georgia Guidestones. I've heard of those. I'll be glad. <laughs> OK. Wyatt, I'm investigating a group called the New World Order. And some people believe that the Georgia Guidestones could be involved. And I know R.C. Christian was the person that really was behind the Guidestones. And you're the only one that knows his identity. You were a banker, and he came to you. Is that correct? Where That's were you a correct. banker? at the Granite City Bank there in Elmerton. R.C. Christian came into our town one Friday afternoon in June of 1979. He wanted to get a monument. When he told me what he was going to do with 10 rules of life on it, I said, if you want to benefit mankind, why don't you just take 50,000, throw it out in the street out there, let the wind blow it back, and the poor people get out and pick it up. You'll benefit more people like that than you will with a bunch of rules on a slab of stone. Did he mention anything about a new world order to you? 
you surprised a few times the New World Order. But he did? Yeah, that was part of the thinking when you read those 10 rules. You can see the New World Order very much in there. Tell me a little bit about what he said to you as far as, I want you to keep my identity secret. How did you feel about that? Being a banker for about 40 years, I had to keep everything secret that had to do with a customer's business. Sure. He wanted me to agree to it that I'd never divulge it, and I never have, and I never will. When I when I leave this earth, no one will ever know who put that monument, who paid for it. And he's passed on, correct? Don't you think that the world should probably know who this man was? His main reason for keeping his identity and his group's identity secret was the curiosity of not knowing who did it would cause people to come and read those 10 guides. <laughs> so that hasn't changed. <laughs> I, uh, I can appreciate that. Why the identity of this RC Christian could be the linchpin here that could help us understand what's behind this new world order and the secret behind the Georgia Guidestones. And so I'd like to ask you, would you reconsider sharing your secret with me? Wyatt, it's really important to me to know who is behind the Georgia Guidestones and possibly connected to this new world order. Would you reveal to me the identity of R.C. Christian? No. I cannot do that because I gave my word I never would. That's not his real name, obviously. Right. OK, why did he pick that name? And he said, because I am a Christian. And that's a name that I'll use. What's the RC stand for? He never told me. I never asked. Did you have any other input into this project? I did. I helped to get the translations of the various languages that went on the stones. The ambassador from Pakistan got the translations done at the UN for me. This is the United Nations. That's correct. Do you think there could be a connection with the New World Order and the United Nations in this project? It, it could be. Was there any plans to expand the monument at all? Yes, Mr. Christian's idea was some other person would come forth or another country and finance an additional eight stones encircling the guide stones, and they would have the other major languages of the world on it with the same message. And they would be called the moon stones and would be positioned to follow the movements of the moon. Oh, interesting. This sounds an awful lot like Stonehenge in England. Well, he had been there and seen it. And many people believe that at the time the monument was made, that there was an impending apocalypse that would reduce the population to a fraction of what it is today, and that the Guidestones were a place of pilgrimage, if you will, to guide the survivors into the future. Do you think that's what R.C. Christian had in mind? He may have, because the way Mr. Christian envisioned it would be a place that certain people could gather back and reestablish the calendar, the compass, and the seasons of the year. So can I ask you one more time, would you reveal Mr. R.C. Christian's identity to me? I cannot. Well, Wyatt, before I leave, I want to thank you. It was really a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'm not letting Wyatt's oath of secrecy stop me. I'm heading back to the Guidestones for one last look. My timing for this trip is no accident. Today is June 21st, the summer solstice. Gary told me an alignment involving the sun and one of the stones occurs today. I think it's another clue to understanding if the New World Order was involved with the Guidestones.
If this secret society exists, I know that powerful people must be involved with it. Whoever built the Guidestones were people who recognized their place in the universe through archaeoastronomy, in the same way ancient civilizations did. Like an acknowledgement, we're all part of something bigger. The Guidestones mark the beginning of summer and are a perfect calendar, perhaps left for survivors of some horrific event. The New World Order predicted, or plan to enact. One thing that I still don't know is whether the New World Order was involved with strange symbols and an alleged underground base at the Denver airport about 1,500 miles northwest of here. Denver International Airport, this is Stacy. Hello, Stacy. Hi. Yeah, this is Scott Walter. I'm following up on a call I made. Okay. I'm out here in Georgia, and I just saw an incredible alignment here at the uh, Guidestones. Sure. And I'm investigating the possibility of a connection between these stones and the Denver airport with the New World Order. I understand you have an extensive tunnel system under the airport, and I'm wondering if you'd be willing to uh, show me around under there. Yeah, sure. I'd be willing to show you around. You would? Yeah. Great. Not a problem. I'll get back to you soon. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for uh, coming out here today. You bet. I'm investigating the New World Order, and I've talked to a number of people who strongly believe that there is evidence here at the airport of a highly secretive and, quite frankly, dangerous organization. So what I would like to know, is the New World Order connected to the Denver airport? We have heard these stories ad nauseum since the airport opened in 1995. We have heard that there is a secret underground society, that there are alien structures, that there's underground runways. So many stories. People question our murals, they question our art, they question our baggage system, everything that we do. And I'm afraid that there's not a whole lot to many of these stories. Well, I can appreciate your viewpoint, but if there is no connection to the New World Order, why is it that the Freemasons have placed a capstone here that says New World Airport Commission? It's the New World Airport Commission. It was a group of civic leaders, business leaders, political leaders that all came together to help fundraise and plan a number of pre-opening events before the airport even opened. New World Airport Commission. Exactly. Well, there's the compass in the square. Definitely uh, the Freemasons were involved here. This isn't uncommon. The Freemasons regularly lay capstones or cornerstones at public buildings all across the US. What about the secret tunnels I've heard so much about? That there's also a base down here that's supposed to house this elite group of people when all the world gets decimated, the population gets reduced, and they're all going to come right under here. Do you think we could conceal this from the 53 million people that go through this airport every year, from the thousands of airline workers that work in the baggage tunnels every day? One way that we could answer that question is if you'd let me go down there. Would you show them to me? Yes. All right, let's go. Let's go.
All right, Stacy, what do we have here? So what you're seeing now are the remnants of what at the time was a state-of-the-art baggage system when the airport was built in 1995. This baggage system runs all through the tunnels under the airport, and it's not in use anymore. It was very expensive. It took a long time and was fraught with problems to really get functional. And then at a point, we just abandoned it. People have mentioned to me more than once that there are secret underground tunnels here and they insist that they're here, not just here, but below here, and perhaps an underground bunker. There are so many theories out there and ideas of what's going on in these tunnels that there's some sort of psychological warfare testing going on here, or probably one of my favorites is there's miles and miles that connect to Cheyenne Mountain, where NORAD is in the Colorado Springs area, another secret underground bunker. How would we know that? I mean, it could be hidden, perhaps, couldn't it? Well, there are a lot of people that work here. There are thousands of airline employees in these tunnels every day. This would be pretty darn hard to conceal. I have a picture I want to show you. I talked with Greg Erickson, who showed me this picture. And I have to admit that I found it very interesting. He claims that the configuration of the runways looks like a swastika. Well, I think if you were going to eliminate some of the runways, connect lines where none exist, yeah, you could make a swastika if you seriously had that in your mind. But this isn't even what our runway system is going to look like. This is a, a shot today, but once we get all of the runways built out, this is going to be a very different picture. I have another thing that I want to address with you. Um, as you get off one of the trams going to the baggage claim, I remember seeing a cart that had an AUAG. Some people have suggested that the AUAG represents some type of pandemic that's going to be released upon people to reduce the population. I know exactly what you're talking about. Let's go take a look and talk more about that. got some names here. We've mm -hmm. got fossils, right. handprints. The one that we're interested in is right over here. So these are the symbols, A-U-A-G. Gold and silver, and in a mining cart. And I suspect you're going to tell me that this is symbolic of the mining history of Colorado, right? Yes, this represents that. It's a celebration of Colorado history. There's nothing cryptic about this message. It's gold and silver. This is Colorado. This is what we were founded on. It's a way to celebrate the miners that were here before us. So the infamous mural, right? Yeah. Some people have suggested what that message is, that the New World Order has plans to depopulate the planet by using violence, and that you guys are part of some big conspiracy. What do you think about all that? This mural in particular gets talked about quite a bit. We have two by the artist Leo Tanguma, and this one is Children of the World Dream of Peace. And it's a two-part mural. So what you just said, though, is a little backwards. You need to read it the other way. Start at the smaller piece, and you look at it, and you realize, no, this is where he starts his story. He talks about what's going to happen with violence, what's going to happen with war, and see its impact on humanity and society. Then you come over here, and you look at all of the children, all of the diversity, all of the happiness when they get rid of the violence, when they get rid of the war. And this is kind of showing what society should be, what we should be striving toward. You know, after everything that I've seen here, you've been kind enough to take me below the airport to look at these tunnels, and I haven't seen anything as far as factual evidence that to me indicates that there's any new world order planning anything in the near future. In fact, when I look at this mural, I see something here that says basically, we're at a critical point in the history of our species. And depending on the decisions that we make right now, we're either gonna have a bright future or we're gonna have a very negative future, but it's up to us. And these, this is a very powerful message. My investigation into the New World Order has proven that for some people, the fear of a global takeover by a powerful and clandestine group is very real. I think this frightening secret society could exist, and Wyatt Martin's admission that the man behind the Guidestones referred to the New World Order proves as much. 
But according to Denver Airport, the apocalyptic images that adorned the concourses are really a message of the power of peace, while the underground tunnels were part of a dysfunctional baggage system. I think there's no denying that the murals are disturbing, and the Colorado geology could support a base even deeper underground, which will fuel conspiracy theorists who'll still contend there's a cover-up. As for the Georgia Guidestones, I think there is a clear-cut New World Order connection. Although R.C. Christian's identity remains a mystery, I did get confirmation that this man had the New World Order in mind when he put up the Guidestones. Whatever the truth, the takeaway is that signs and symbols that we encounter every day have meaning, just not always the meaning we might expect. <laughs>